I think the devil or something probably just as wicked tried to come for my soul not too long ago. And I say that because, like I said, I'm, I used to be an alcoholic and I'm sober now going on six months. And it's been 10 years of me drinking my liver inside out since uh, I quit. And when I tell you I did not know that when you try to quit alcohol, you can die from that. You can die from the withdrawals that you have trying to quit alcohol. I did not know that. And I feel like that's what happened to me months ago, going on six months ago. Matter of fact, I'm going to start in the beginning of the year. It was around in, in December when I started. I started to stop drinking as much as I used to. And I started to try to get healthy. I started trying to lose weight. And it started in December, but I ended up starting back to drink going on the end of December. And, start, and so I started over in January. January, that's when I went full hard on trying to stop drinking and trying to lose weight and get healthy and bring my blood pressure down because I had a scare and I had to go to the hospital. And this is right after I stopped trying to start up. Uh, I, had, I stopped trying to drink so, so much, and it's like I started having withdrawals. And I ended up, my blood pressure got so high, I almost fell out at work. I drove myself to the hospital. And after that, I'm like, yeah, I got to take this real serious. I'm going to end up dead. So I cut out alcohol for a while. I cut out alcohol. Then I got sick with something that January with like an upper respiratory infection. And so... I wasn't eating. Only thing I was eating was fruit smoothies, and I was drinking like this, like kind of. It's like a remedy with thyme in it and lemon juice and all type of stuff, honey, to try to make me feel better. And I lost like thirty pounds, man. I lost thirty pounds, and after that, a lot of stuff just started going real crazy. I stopped drinking so much. I cut my drinking down so much to the point that. Matter of fact, let me, let me backtrack just a little bit. Towards the, the end of that January, I lost my job. That was because I got sick and I took a lot of vacation days off trying to make up for the days I was off being sick. They let me go. And so for another month, I was just in my apartment alone. And during that month, month was like the hardest month because the sickness almost like it came back. And I was still not drinking. I was going through withdrawals. And a lot of y'all hear about my testimony on here well a lot of y'all probably not probably didn't hear about it i need to redo it and re-upload it in a better way because i don't like the way i told it the first time but it was around this time when an angel appeared in my room legit a ball of light appeared in my room and it came past my arm and like a like a gust of wind just blew past my arm but i feel like that next month in that february it was some type of spiritual war going on inside of my room, inside of my apartment. And I say that because, like I say, I have visions, too. I see things. I know y'all run across a lot of people who say they see things, they hear things. I'm legit. When I say I see things, I hear things, it's the real deal. Like, there was times when I knew people was going to do things in their life before anybody else knew. Like, I knew, like, there was this girl who got on an airplane for the first time in her life, and I knew that she was doing it before she even decided to take the trip. I knew she was going to do it, and I knew that she was going to be scared because I seen it in the vision. All right, so I, I had a vision of three knocks on my... I know I heard three knocks in the vision, and after the three knocks, something bad was happening. It was almost like it was game on. I don't know what it was game on for, but I'm starting to think it was for my soul, but it was game on. The vision showed me three knocks, and it showed, like, a lot of fear and some type of confrontation and some type of battle going on. And it was showing me that I need to be scared. I need to be scared of this. It was showing me that this is serious. And when I had that vision, I remember it was right before I was, I was about to lay down and go to sleep. I remember I said to myself, Oh, man, no, nah, I can't be dealing with this right now. I'm staying in this apartment to myself. I'm not going nowhere. I'm trying to stop drinking. But I would sneak off and drink just a little bit. And I'm like, man, I'm really battling with this right now. I don't need to be alone 
battling with my thoughts and trying to stop drinking this alcohol, then I might give in and I drink too much and I don't ain't no telling what it'll do to me. And so I go to sleep and like I think it was like days later. Days later I go to sleep and I wake up to three loud knocks on my bed. It was right on the headboard. Three loud knocks. I jumped up like a cat, man. I'm talking about I was so scared. The energy the energy in the room felt so dark. When I say it felt dark, this is the darkest I ever felt ever in my life. And I didn't felt all type of darkness. I didn't have people put voodoo on me and I didn't been in the dark having like invisible wolves growling at me and things pulling at my dreads in the dark. And I'm in a room by myself. And all I would do is go back to sleep. Like I never cared about stuff like that. The way I see it, you can't cause any real harm to me. You know what I'm saying? So they put that that, that uh, voodoo on me. It is what it is. It'll pass. But this right here, this right here was deep. This right here was way darker. This right here had me legit scared. I had to start back praying. I had to call out to God. I had to start praying. Every night I made it a thing to not go to sleep without saying my prayers. Matter of fact, I would pray at least five, six times a day. Just randomly get on my knees and pray. That's how dark the presence felt. And it felt like every day, every single day, it felt like something was battling. It's almost like, <clears throat> it's like something wanted to get me so bad, but it couldn't. That's what it felt like. It's like something was holding it back. And I legit think it was angels and demons just fighting for my soul in the background. I did not know the entire time. Like I said, I'm trying, I had stopped drinking, but I would make, maybe slip up one day or two out of the month and go and get something to drink. But for the most part, I was going cold turkey. I stopped drinking. And I was suffering from withdrawals. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, it's like, it was hard for me to even eat. So I would just take the smoothies. I was losing weight. And I need, I didn't even know that going through alcoholic withdrawals is like <clears throat> some of the worst withdrawals you can go to. It's like the deadliest type of withdrawals you can go through. And people like, a lot of people die from that when they try to do it on their own. And I did not know when I was doing it all on my own. Like I said, this is 10 years of cold, hard drinking, getting passed out drunk all the time. And so they say it, it creates hallucinations. But when I tell you this is not, this was not nothing I was hallucinating. This was straight up real. This is things that I felt in physical things. This is not something that was just made up in my mind. I'm not crazy, man. So I really, I legit feel like people who go through alcoholic withdrawals and they say you're going through hallucinations, it's really you so close to death that that veil peels back a little bit unless you see some things that's around. Some spears is able to talk to you or you able to see certain spirits or you're able to be aware of the money of the demonic influence around you or even the angelic influence around you but i feel like i was so close to death that i was able to see or at least feel this battle for my soul going on and so the darker i felt the presence get the more i prayed i prayed and i prayed and i prayed i even bought a bible i ain't had a bible in so long man I even bought a Bible. I still got the Bible to this day. Still got the Bible to this day. And I bought this Bible for a reason. I got it. I ain't got the, the, the NIV version for a reason, but I got the this Bible with the ocean on it for a reason. And that reason is because when I was going through all them withdrawals, I was getting visions and I was getting dreams, man. I was close to death and I didn't know it. I remember, I remember one day I woke up out of my dream, out of my sleep, and it felt like, it felt like wherever I just came from, I felt like I was so light. When I, when I came back into my body and tried to get up, man, it felt like my it, this meat suit felt so heavy. This is all I can think is, man, this meat suit is heavy. And I was having dreams of going to like heavenly places, heavenly realms. Specifically, this one place I went to was a place where it was an ocean. I was on the ocean and I was in like this little coffee shop slash this place where people can get little pastries and stuff like that. And I had my own business or something. I guess it's just something I just always wanted. And, and 
it was filled with people, all different types of people, white, black, Asian, all different type of races. There was just, everybody was just in there having a good time, talking amongst each other. And it was so beautiful, this place we was in. It was partially on the shore, but partially in the ocean. And the water was so blue. It was like a very beautiful blue color. And it was a very peaceful, very beautiful feeling that I felt. And every time I wake up from coming from these heavenly places, I came back into the world and I felt like, man, this feel like some something that's very close to hell. Like this feel like something that is like, I don't want to be here. I want to go back to that place I just came from. That place I just came from with all those people around. It felt like it was so much love and so much support and so much. And it's like they just give it off naturally to you. Like all of the good people that's on the world here, it's like they got picked up. It's like they got picked to be in this place. Like this was their prize. Like good job. Y'all was good people here, so y'all get to be in this place where y'all get to love and support each other forever. And it's like everybody just felt content and full of just uh just a love so strong it kept you so grounded and like I, I I love that feeling. And another time I had the vision, I was back on the ocean. I don't know what it is about oceans, but I was back on the ocean. Man, it was so beautiful. The skyline, like just watching the sunset, it was beautiful. Just not even a sunset. It was just big, beautiful, like a big, beautiful blue sky. And I look at the oceans. The oceans was beautiful and blue. And I'm on the shore. And I'm in my, it's like I'm in a fake room that looked like my old apartment room. And I'm laying on the bed and I got, I had a Bible. There was a Bible sitting on the headboard behind me. And I was just sitting on the bed, just like I was just, wherever this place was, it's like it was full of love. And the love was like, it was healing me. It, and I just had to sit there for a minute and let the love heal me. And so I was just, I was just sitting there, letting the love heal me, letting the love do what it do. And the Bible was behind me on the headstand. And the Bible looked like this. It looked like a replica of what was around me. It looked like the ocean. It looked like the shore and all that. And so I went to buy a Bible and I bought a Bible that looked closest to what it looked like on the, uh, in my, in my dream. And what was so crazy was after all that stuff happened, that's when I seen that light appear in my room. After all that stuff happened and the light floated to me and it like brushed up against my arm. Like, I think it was like a day or two after that, I was just sitting in my bed one day. And as I'm sitting in my bed, I think I might've opened the Bible up and tried to read a little bit. And I set it back, uh, I think behind me or right next to me. And I just sat up in my bed, just thinking, man, I'm glad that's over with. I didn't stop drinking. This whatever presence it was in my room, it left. I just I got exposed to some type of light being or angel. Ain't no telling what it was, but it was like I can sense that it was powerful, but I can sense that it was good too. You know, it wasn't here to harm me. And I felt like whatever it is on the light side of things in the spiritual realm, they looking out for us as human beings, man. And and they want us to win. They want us to be at peace. They want us to live lives of love and I felt so content with that. I just sat up in my bed and and like for a quick moment, it's almost like a flash went through my mind of remembering that dream. When I seen myself sitting in the bed in that dream on the ocean, it's almost like I seen it from a certain point of view. Like I was looking down at myself and boom, I saw it again right then and there. And I looked at my, around at myself and I'm like, dang, I'm in that same position. And that book was in the same position. I got the book now. You know what I'm saying? The Bible. And it's like, oh my goodness, bro. This is the route I'm supposed to be on. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I was supposed to be praying all the time, staying on God's side, leaving that alcohol alone because the alcohol was trying to destroy me, man. It was trying to kill me. And Jesus, I feel like he saved me from that. I feel like the angel saved me from that. And it was beautiful, man. Like the things I, I saw... Jesus, I saw, um, like, a, I saw God. God, he had just, he was just like they said in the Bible. He had hair of wool, like a little beard, and he had, like, a like a mini fro. It, it looked like black people hair. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It looked like black people hair, but it was white and, and you know, white and woolly, just like black people hair. And 
he didn't have a thick afro. It was kind of small and it kind of looked patchy a little bit. It was full and thick and rich, but it was kind of in patches. It's almost like he never used a comb ever. He never combed it out. He just free flowed it and let it grow how it grew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, he looked like even his skin. You see how I'm brown right now, man? He looked brown just like that. Brown just like this, but he looked see-through. He looked like a brown diamond, like a brown gem. And it was very beautiful to see him, man. He had a, a bright glowing... Uh, it was something like golden and shining over him. It's almost like it was the sun, but it looked better than the sun. It was more glorious than the sun. And it was beautiful, man. <laughs> you know, the things that I seen was beautiful, bro. You're not finna tell me that was, was in a hallucination. That was real. And it was exactly how they said in the Bible. And he had a white robe on with a staff, like a shepherd. You know, Jesus had a white robe on and he had sandals and he looked dark, but kind of Middle Eastern. And you can't fake that, man. I can't fake that light that appeared in my room. This stuff is real, man. And I feel like I could have lost my life. Like I said, man, y'all leave that alcohol alone. Y'all leave the drugs mm -hmm. alone because these demons, they want to kill you. They want to kill you, and they don't want you to see that beautiful stuff that I saw. They don't want you to see that. I feel like they tried to kill me before I got to see that because they knew I would never turn back to it. And ever since then, I ain't been no alcoholic. I swear, them last few times I drunk, it felt like demons was trying to destroy my life. I remember one time I, I told myself I wasn't even going to get all the way drunk. I was just going to drink a little bit. I drunk some, and I ended up going to sleep at the desk while I was sitting there while, while I was watching a movie. I took my glasses off while I was drunk. I took my glasses off and sat on my glasses. I don't even remember doing it. It's almost like I was possessed. It's like something tried to break my glasses, man. Tried to get the weight of me sitting on my glasses to break it, but it didn't break. I remember even days after that, I went to sleep, but I had got drunk again. Like I said, I, got, I did get drunk like two or three times during that time. And I remember I went to sleep. I told myself I wasn't going to get passed out drunk, but I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I couldn't feel my arm. So I looked to my arm and my arm was in the air and it, it was like balled up in the fist like it was about to hit me, but I couldn't feel it. It's like, like I said, it's like I was possessed again. Man, I'm telling you, it's so real. It's like these demons was trying to show me how much they hated me before God can show me how much he loved me. Bro, y'all better start praying and getting right with God, man. Pray, get right with God. I still don't really know what that three knock mean, but pff, it's crazy out here. The things that I saw, though, like I said, it was beautiful. I even had a dream of me going into this dungeon-like place, and there was snakes everywhere. I dodged all the snakes, and I seen the devil. And the devil, it's like as soon as I seen him, I knew not to trust him. As he talked, I knew not to trust what he was saying. Like they say, the devil is a liar. I used to always like kind of think that was funny why people just say that. But it's, when I saw the devil in his dream, I knew, like, man, you lying to me. You lying to me and you trying to trick me. And I knew not to trust him. It's almost like when you in a family and it's that uncle, everybody tell you not to trust. Don't talk to him. Don't uh, listen to him. Like, what did he, what did his uncle tell you? You better not do what the uncle tell you because he's trying to trick you. It, that's what it felt like from the devil. Like, you can't trust nothing he say. And he was so mischievous in what he was saying and he was so... I can't even explain it, man, but every I, I understand the spirit behind the devil, and I see it everywhere in the world today, but even in that dream, God showed me myself in a white robe. He put me in a white robe. He showed me this library. It was a big library filled up with books, and then like it went on forever, and the book I picked out, it said Faith in it, and it said John the Baptist, and it said, um, oh, man, Peter. And it said the words faith and it had a vial with blue water in it and it filled up. And he showed me with a in a white robe and I was preaching and I was casting out demons. It's all so beautiful, man. It is all so beautiful. And I'm just saying that to say this, y'all get y'all lives right, get right with God, because God wants to show you how much he loves you. God wants to show all of us things, but we keep going back to these vices that give the demons control.
so the demons can show us how much they hate us. These things, they make us feel good. The pornography makes us feel good. I know because I still struggle with that all the time. Struggle with lust and pornography. I'm trying, this is the next addiction that I'm about to kill. I'm speaking that on my life right now. I'm killing that pornography addiction. And I killed smoking cigarettes and I killed alcohol, the alcohol addiction, and porn is next. These demons, they want you to love these things. They want you to be in a situation where you still complacent and instead of going back to wanting them feelings. Because every time you do that, you keep that door open to that sin, they can come in. But as soon as you close that door, God is gonna show, God is gonna lock it. God will lock it, God will put a lock on it so they can't come back in. You know what I'm saying? So y'all go to God before it's too late, man. Don't let them demons win. They wanna kill you. They make these things feel good for a reason so they can snuff out your light don't let them snuff out your light. But that's it for this video. Peace.